Tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel, the home of the Granny Square and where I am sharing my journey becoming a crochet designer. Today I have my September in review for you, September 2020. So get yourself a project, get yourself a nice drink and let's get cosy and go through this pile of good stuff. Mm -hmm. good stuff if you are returning welcome back it's so good to see you I hope you've been well the last month and if you're brand new thank you for spending this time here right there's a big old pile of stuff up in here <laughs> um yeah so September Whew, what a month it kind of went fast um, and it also brought autumn to the UK. I'm in the United Kingdom. Um, we had a couple of warm days and then all of a sudden, wham, it's autumn. Like the leaves are falling off the trees, it's colder, um, the nights are getting dark at about half seven in the evening. And yeah, it's, it's the time to be cozy. And so with the change in the season, I find that my pace changes as well. Um, I find in the summer that I'm like go 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 and then um, with the longer daylight hours as well I feel like I get a lot done and then as autumn and winter start to creep in I'm a lot more, I slow down a lot more, um, I'm a lot more like I just want to be cosy, I want the fire on, I want the candles on, um, it's dark in the evening so you've got the light on and I just want to snuggle up and also with the change of season is the change of wardrobe. So I've spent the last couple of weeks being a lot more intentional, um, spending a bit of time looking at pieces out there that I want to buy for my wardrobe, like some new jeans, some new leggings, um, like warmer clothing, but also the bits I want to make to add into my wardrobe, my handmade wardrobe. And I spent quite a bit of time in my journal um, creating like a mood board nothing hugely fancy I just went through my Pinterest board and printed off pictures that I like the look of um, and I grouped them together in my journal and I'll put some close-up pictures for you as well um, and I decided to group them in colour there are some very distinct colours in my journal um, so in terms of my wardrobe, my staple colour is black, but then I'm also quite partial to like a, a caramel or a maca or an oatmeal, and then all the way down to a cream, like um, a rich cream, nothing too, I kind of like it grubby, nothing too, um, not, not that side of white, I like it veering towards the oatmeal and a little bit grubby in its, in its colour but then I also really like my pinks, in particular, dusty pink. So I kind of put together a bit of a lookbook, worked out what pieces I wanted to buy for my wardrobe and what I wanted to make. I really, really want um, more cardigans in my wardrobe. So I want a really long line one that comes like below my knee. I want um, a more of a cropped one, which I'm part way through. And then I wanted a couple of oversized jumpers, a few that I could wear as um, like a, a jumper dress almost, and then just some longer ones that I can throw on over a shirt or, you know, I want to be able to layer up. And I've been looking at textures and colours and all that good stuff. So, having done that, I then started thinking about the patterns I've got coming out and how I could make those in the colours that fit in with my wardrobe because I love to make in the bright colours and I wear the bright colours but I am more drawn to the more muted colours such as this one and this is Revival this is my first pattern that I released in August it feels so long already um, and this is my most worn and you might be able to see it's getting quite bobbly because I wore it like every week, every day for weeks on end and I still do 
Um, so yeah, I was looking at the patterns that I have coming out. I've just released another pattern, Promise, which is my granny square dress. I'll put pictures on the screen for you. And I did that in really bright colours as well, which I love. And it's great for date night or even if you're staying in, like, Saturday night at home. There's a, there's a word for it. What is it? It's like the big night in or something. It's not that. But anyway, that, even if you're having a night in, works really, really well. Um, but now I want more pieces that I can layer up. So, I have been looking at my previous patterns and just before I start this huge show and tell, just to let you know, I have been working on a lot of new things, so some of this you will not have seen, uh -uh. Um, <laughs> and I'm excited to show you. Just before we jump in, if you want to get yourself a copy of this jumper or promise, they are now available on my website. Ravelry, Etsy and Lovecrafts and I'll leave the links below and during September, not September, October 2020, the month that we're in now, you can get the both of them for £10 so if you buy them from my website so the links will be below and then you can hook yourself up. Have one bit of hair that's just, what are you doing? <laughs> okay so before we go into whips, I'm going to show you new acquisitions because that then directly feeds into my whips, okay? So, got some big piles of yarn. This huge bag was kindly sent to me by my friend Nicole. Um, there's a couple of bits in here that were already mine, but it was rammed full of yarn, absolutely full. And she was having a big clear out and said that there was just bits in here that she would never use. Um, DK's are up to chunky and super chunky and would I be interested? Yes, 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 yes. And so this bag arrived last weekend and I had an hour long journey in the car because I took my niece to a wildlife park for her birthday. And so I took this with me and just dived straight in in the car. I wasn't the driver and it was really good to get yarn that I wouldn't usually pick out for myself because there's colours and textures in here that I wouldn't really I wouldn't really gravitate towards normally but it has changed my view on yarn. Um, so these colours, they were already in this bag but they are my like go-to colour scheme. This colour, this colour and I do wear quite a bit of grey as well. Um, but then there was some of these and I think they might be super chunky because it calls for a 7mm needle and it is this Boston, I'm not sure how to pronounce the word so it's there, but it came in loads of different colours. Some of the scraps are here. So there's this colour that I love, like an oatmeal cream, there was pumpkin orange and then I held some other colours double to match and there was this walnut brown and I really like this one. I'm not sure what it was because there's no ball band. I have a suspicion which brand it might be, but I'm not sure. But I really like the effect. It's like a um, foresty green with some darker greens in there and a bit of teal. Um, and then there's all sorts of good stuff in here, including this Arin, pink Arin. So I'm going to have a play with that. Um, and then there's this chunky one as well, and it's glitter. Oh, really, really like that. This end, I'm never gonna weave it in, so but yeah, that's glittery. Could definitely make some fun out of that. And then there was like bright pops like this, which I actually had that color before, and I've run out. Um, and then there was more paint box in here. I think they're all DK. Oh, this one's Aaron. Um, and then I actually went stash diving myself just to see if I could find some other bits to start using up. And I really like this one that I've got. And I've got over a kilo of this. So that's going to feature in a pattern. So I'm in the car with this huge amount of yarn. 
and I've got my hooks and I was like okay so I started pulling bits out and I, obviously there's no room I'm in the passenger seat I've got a kid behind me in the kid seat so I'm rammed all the way forward so it's just pulling bits out and sort of twirling the bag around like this just looking and I decided to make some giant granny squares now when I was on my tribe star chat with um, my tribe stars <laughs> in September Sarah said to me I love the granny squares but can you just make them big like the least amount of ends possible and big and I was like no problem I got you so this happened and isn't that just everything about autumn or well, if you're American fall that is the epitome of autumn so I pulled out all the chunky yarns. I'm not sure if they're chunky or super chunky, but when I held DK double, it matched in weight, so I'll need to check. Um, the center has got this lovely teal. We've got an oatmeal around it, and then pumpkin orange, which is lovely, and not normally a color that I am hugely drawn to. I haven't brought that color in a long, long time because I've got little snip like scraps of it in my stash and that's it. Walnut brown and then this one was a DK held double and it's like um, a light, I want to say gold, it reminds me of wheat and then this one was the forest green teal and then black and the black I know was James C. Brett, I kept the tag, it's not that one. Because I was looking for some more before I told myself stop buying more yarn and use what you've got. Stash dive. It was this. James C. Brett Chunky with Merino. And it was a ball of black and I've pretty much used it all up so you just can only see this bit but it differs to um, just standard black in that because it's got the bit of merino in it it's soft and it has a sheen to it so i made a stack of these granny squares and edged them in black and they are going to be joined together and they're going to make a big granny square jumper and it's going to be called big as well um so i'm quite pleased with that one so i've made 12 of these i believe and I started joining them and it just leaves the sleeves to put together. So that is a new whip called Big and it is chunky. I don't know, I will check and I'll put it on the screen if it's super chunky or chunky. Um, but if you don't have any super chunky or chunky, you can just hold your DK double, which is what I did. Um, and yeah, it worked a treat. Yeah, I think it's super chunky. It's just when I picked out this super chunky, I felt like it was smaller. I don't know, but there we go. So that's big. And that's one of the new whips I've been working on. It was really nice to have a big granny square project. I used a six mil hook, which is the largest that I have in my set which is down here in my tulip set. Um, I think if I had a larger hook, I would have maybe gone up to a seven or an eight, but I just don't have one. So maybe that's something I will invest in. Um, and yeah, I had them done. Started on the Saturday morning. And bear in mind, I had my niece all weekend as well. I then um, finished them all on the Sunday other than that ends and they're now getting woven in but on the sleeves I wanted to do just plain black sleeves so I am just working on different ways um, different construction and sort of different design shapes of the jumper because I usually go with the drop shoulder like this one but I was just playing around with a couple of different ideas so when I make progress on that I will show you um, and then the last week or so of September I hadn't been feeling too well and I ended up um, having a consultation with the doctor 
now we can do a lot of things on the phone or via video that we couldn't do this time last year so I didn't ha actually have to go into the doctor's surgery I called them and then um, they did like little bits of video to check bits and pieces and I basically had a throat infection and it had gone through to my stomach as well and so um, I was just feeling a bit off and a bit not as much sorry for myself I was just tired and I think as well with the change of season like my body was just like slow down um, and I wanted something quite mindless that I didn't really need to think about um, or that I didn't really need to take notes of as well because a, a lot of what I crochet now is my own project and so I take notes the entire time so I can put that into my pattern. I always want to make sure my patterns are really comprehensive and give as much um, like direction as possible and so I was working on this which is Victory and this is the denim version and I showed you it last time and I wasn't sure on what sleeves to go with and I decided to go with the matching all the way through um, and so I have put this together, seamed it and started doing the edging um, so that one isn't that far off being done and in terms of its matching skirt I've made all of the squares but I want to sit and do the matching skirt as a tutorial which means being in my yarn room with all the lights beaming on me and the overhead camera and everything which normally I don't mind but because I've just been feeling a bit grotty I wanted to do mindless crochet and be in bed you can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit I'm still a bit I'm okay but I'm just not quite feeling myself yet. So once the squares were done with big, um, it got to a point then where I knew I wanted to play around with the sleeves, but didn't quite have the brain power for that right then. So it got parked and that's fine. Um, I will at some point go back and do the ends, even if I don't progress the sleeves for a little while yet. Um, and so I started playing around with a couple of swatches because I knew I wanted to start a mindless project. Um, so this one and this one came about. So let's go with this one first. This is a sample that I made up and the reason I made this sample is because I'm putting together a workbook, it's very nearly finished actually, um, teaching people how to, teaching makers how to size grade their patterns. So for example, I made Revival in my size, which is a HDDC size two, which is a 30 to 32 centimeter circumference, no, inches. Centimeters is tiny. I think I'm like 81 centimeters and 32 inches uh, chest circumference. <clears throat> excuse me, and um, in the workbook I teach you how to take the pattern you've designed and put it into as many different sizes as you want. So I range from extra small all the way up to 5XL and in the HDDC sizing that's 1 to 9. And so I did this swatch because in my workbook I show you how to make a swatch, the do's and don'ts of making the swatch why you need one, how to measure it, and how to take those calculations and put them into an Excel spreadsheet so you know how many stitches people need to cast on chain for size 8, which is 4XL, or how many stitches for the extra small, which is size 1. And so I took the picture and I put it in my workbook and this is the front cover, though it's in black and white because it's in proof stage. How to grade a knit or crochet pattern. And I then took pictures and I added it in. And then went on, I'm not going to show you right now, but I took pictures and put it in. And then I did the all of the grading within it and I take you through step by step so how to get started, how to set up the spreadsheet, um, what measurements I use, how I calculate everything, all the formulas for Excel is all in there and step by step 
and this was the swatch that I decided to use because I also take you through step by step for designing a pattern. Um, things to keep into, con into consideration, keep in mind to consider all the different elements and so throughout my workbook as we're going through the designing process I've got two examples, I've got a child's dress and then I've got an adult's um, casual jumper and I decided that I was going to use the casual jumper idea as the example and as I'd graded it for the workbook I was a bit like well I'm just going to make it then because I've done all of the work so I did what I am, I'm almost done actually started making this this Monday when I was coming towards the end of my antibiotics and about halfway through actually and I've done front and back panel pretty much and the sleeves already so all that's left is to do the shoulder shaping and seam it all together and then put the ribbing on which I need to make um, so the yarn, this is an entirely stash busting project. It is one strand of black four ply yarn held double with scraps of yarn. And what I do is I make balls of yarn like this and they are all of the scraps of yarn. So you know like when you get yarn off in the bottom of a project bag where you've pulled all the colours out and they get all mixed up and you snip the bits off and you're left with random ends or you get the scraggins of a, of a ball because you have got leftovers from a project. I just make it into these balls like this and what I do is I magic knot the, ball, the yarn together and if you look there's loads of colour in there and I've just wound it double holding the black because it makes it easier when I'm making this. So, look at this. It has such a great effect. The black really held, like pulls it all together and it just gives it that consistency that then makes all of these colours really gel. And it also, I feel like it mutes the colours as well so it's not hugely overpowering. And I got, I was quite inspired by Lage, Alf um, Lage, I'll put her name on here, her at tag. She made like a knitted version and she was just using mainly scrap yarn. And I thought about making one and I swatched for one and then I was like, I'd rather crochet. So I've used the two strands held double in this project and um, yeah, I really, really like the effect. And who doesn't have scrap yarn that they want to use up? I think we all have scrap yarn. So there's one body panel. Here's the second. And then I made the sleeves. I made one yesterday and one today. Now, I was a little bit selective in the colours that went in there. I didn't want anything too dark and I wanted the predominant colour to be pink, um, which is why you can see so much pink in there because I've decided my accent colour for this year will be pink. So I wanted it to be predominantly pink just so that it goes with other items in my wardrobe. Um, but I am not opposed to wearing colour but I find that this is a way that it, it really fits my aesthetic. So this is going to be an oversized jumper. It's going to come to around my hips. Um, I want it to kind of cover my butt, like I want to be warm. And then here are the sleeves. <laughs> I love that pop of yellow in that one. Um, and then the only bit left to do, like I said, is the shaping, seam it and then put the ribbing on and I can't decide whether to do the ribbing which is going to look like this purely in black or to make it multicoloured and just carry on using the scrap yarn 
So I have asked my tribe stars to make a decision and then I will go ahead and do that. This one will probably be done in a couple of days. So yeah, I've also had to break out all the stitch markers um, just so I could see my stitch increases at a glance. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with them. I made them in the round so you can ever so slightly see the join because I actually turn around and go in the opposite direction and it just means that the seam isn't on slightly and it doesn't um, if you don't turn around and go back in the other direction you get like a diagonal seam that works its way around and I'm not keen on that so this is actually called example because it's the example in my workbook and I figured as I've done all the work on it I may as well release it as a pattern so I've made the sample and this is going to get a lot of use in my winter wardrobe. I'm going to wear it with my Doc Martens um, leather look leggings and then maybe like an oversized white shirt under it so that the tails stick out the bottom um, and then I'll put like a big teddy coat on and then a scarf and if I ever go out and um, yeah really pleased with that. There is quite a bit of ease in this jumper, like I can get the sleeve over the jumper I'm wearing and that's intentional, I wanted that big oversized look and I wanted it to be quite a dense material, like it, it's got some movement in it but I just wanted, um, I wanted it to be warm and I think that looks amazing. So that's example, that's example which was born from that. Um, and then my next project, in my last vlog I asked everybody to vote, do they want to see, well what pattern do you want to see published in the next coming months? And there was a huge, huge, huge amount of comments, so thank you so much for everyone that commented, it was great to see all your comments. Everyone pretty much voted for the cardigans. So there's this one, Inspirited, which is entirely granny stripe. And then there's another one, Enamoured, that's um, granny square in the back. And they won by a landslide. And so they are what's coming next. And I decided that I'm gonna go for a more chunky look than this one, um, because I enjoyed playing with the chunky so much. And I want it to be in pink. So I went and got this. Now this is pound shop yarn. It um, is one pound a ball. You get three for two pound. So it costs you one. It costs you two pound for 150 grams. And I went a bit crazy and bought a lot because I want to hold it double. And it looks amazing. So this is the pound shop yarn in dusky pink. Um, I know that acrylic isn't everybody's jam and you can go find whatever yarn blend, whatever works for you out there. I'm just showing you a really cost effective way to be able to make yourself a few items to put in your wardrobe. Um, I have splashed out on some really nice um, alpaca yarn and also I've got my eye on some hand, my eye on some hand dyed yarn but for now decided to go with this. It's in a dusky pink and I feel like it's not really showing up too well. Let me show you the ball. It's a really nice sort of grubby pink. It's not too bright. Um, it's kind of muted. It goes really well with like everything in my wardrobe pretty much. So I'm going to make this entirely out of this. And again, I will probably wear it with like a pair of mom jeans, maybe a white hoodie with this on top. Um, and it's just going to be super warm and snuggly. It's nice and thick, really dense. Again, I'm using a 6mm hook and I know this is going to work up within minutes. Um, so I used some of my brain power to quickly grade my size on my size only, just as a starting point. And then um, once I've made it up, I'll finish the grading for all the other sizes. 
So I've got the instructions ready to go on this one, so I can start this as soon as I've put this one together. So this is Inspirited, and it's going to be a super chunky, beautiful cardigan, and I cannot wait to get that to you. I don't know the specifics on release dates. I know that Invested, which is my vest, put a picture on for you, it's coming in October, end of October, October 24th. Um, and then I wanted Victory to come out during November. I'm not sure if that will now be December. Just because of the sheer amount of granny squares, I want to give the testers sort of six to eight weeks to work on that. And that still needs photographing, writing up, going to the tech editor. Um, so once I have nailed down a release schedule and it's decided when that's coming out, I think it will be December. Um, I'll let you know what November slot is, but at the moment it's looking like this. And I think this one will come out when the workbook comes out as well. So maybe, maybe November. If not, I'm thinking January. So well, I'm really looking forward to taking pictures of this one. And I've got enough scraps that I could definitely make a second one. But I'm thinking of making it in block stripes. So like... A chunk of pink, a chunk of different pink. I'm thinking about it. So yeah, that's all of my whips. Um, I did have another incoming goodie. I got this stitch marker, and it's from What Mustard Meat, and I'll put that on the screen. And it's a Harry Bow stitch marker. Is it gonna show you? Well, you might not focus. It says Haribo and it's the ice cream one. And I'll put a picture on the screen for you. And I just couldn't resist when I saw it. So I got that. Um, and I have been scraping the barrel to get. I'm now down to my plastic stitch markers um, because there's so many on here, here. And I've got another product over there which is. And that's got stitch markers all over it for the increases as well. So that's all my incoming goodies. Lots of yarn that was gifted. Um, lots of affordable yarn. There will be a lot left over. Um, but I had in mind either I wanted to make an oversized jumper or I thought about knitting the knee length cardigan because I found a pattern I really want to make. So, I might go and get a bit more. Um, I think my only reservation is that because it's a lower quality, I'm not sure I want to put hours in knitting something for it to not last, but then at the same time, once it becomes, like, if it looks really messy, I'll just wear it in the house so it's not like it's a complete waste. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll just see how inspirited wares in it and uh, make my decision from there but I do really love the colour it's lovely so I think that's everything um yeah oh and then also this blanket who remembers this so I started making a lot of centres because I want to make a two round granny square blanket and I recently, because I've got a few more pinks to add to it now, because I bought yarn for um, Revival and I'm going to have bits of this and then Nicole sent me bits of pink as well, I wanted to add to it because I, if you remember quite a while back I worked out exactly how many centres I needed to make a massive two round granny square blanket. And because now it is more wintry weather, it's the sort of thing I want to be working on. So I need to go back and watch my old video so I can listen and work out what hook size I was using. So I don't think I wrote it down. Um, but I could always ask Shardine at Shard Creates because she was making one. Uh, I've got here 4.5 mil. So, 
that's great to know because I have got lots of different bits of pink like this one and so what I do is I'll say for example my poor throat sorry say for example Brad and I are going on a walk and then we tend to like do I don't know five miles and then stop at a pub and get some pub lunch and then find our way back home this ball of yarn can easily fit in my bag or in my coat pocket with my hook and some scissors and then I can just make up I'll just keep going until I've used it all up and then I'll add it to that when I get back and that is a way that you can have crochet on the go and it's really lightweight and portable so that's something that I am going to add to over the next coming months until it gets to a point where I've got enough and then I will pick a joining colour and get started on that but it looks so colourful I did toy with the idea of putting it together with like a teddy bear yarn so that the blanket's more of a fleecy colour or a fleecy texture and then I was like that might cost a fair bit which isn't a problem or the texture might look weird to have this and then fleece all around it it's really messed up the lighting now hasn't it sorry um focus on me <laughs> so then I thought well what if I do a round in the fluffy yarn but then it won't be a two round blanket I don't know so I might just purchase a random ball of fluffy yarn because I've got a few fluffy yarn projects in mind as well and then decide or if I don't do like a teddy bear yarn maybe I'll do more of like a merino mohair blend so it's got that fluffiness yeah I'm just really channeling the fleecy like I love the fleecy um, let me show you these sorts of blankets with this texture I've got a couple oops and they're my go-to when I'm really cold and I want my go-to to be this and I want it to have the same warm warming properties which is why I was thinking of merging it with the teddy yarn or like a merino fluff mohair merino fluff so I think I might have to buy a few random balls and just have a little play which that's fine um, but yeah there's loads of different pinks in here so I'll just show you a few before we go um, and the idea is if I wanted it to be for this room just as something that's on the sofa and eventually it will be in my yarn shed my she shed which is going to be the HGDC HQ so I've gone with all these different pinks so you've got like a dusty dusky pink and then you've got the brighter pinks it's not quite Barbie pink but it's quite a bright pink um, there's a bit of glitter pinks in here This pink is a glitter pink and it's also the one I did the two round curtain in. And then good old baby pink. And a bright Barbie pink. And then there's a few like mocha and oatmeal colours and there's a little bit of lilac but very few. Because I want the main colour to be pink. And it's going to be joined in a colour very similar to my sofa. So, yeah. That is all of my whips at the moment. So I've got Victory, Example, Big, Inspirited, and a mystery project that I'm not sharing. I think I've shared quite a bit with you already. Um, all ongoing. As well as a couple of knitting projects that I've been working on. Just because I found, again, I'm... Sometimes I just want to like 
crochet or knit on a project and the pattern's already set out, they're not mine and so it's more mindless and it's a little bit relaxing because as much as I love designing I do have to do a lot of thinking. So there's a couple of knitted projects on the go as well. The other thing I've been working on is recording lots of tutorials for you all. Um, I realised that I was getting a lot of the same questions such as um, I don't know if I can make a pattern, I don't know how to read a crochet pattern, um, I don't understand what the gauge is, I don't understand what yarns I can use, if I swap the yarn will the pattern be bigger, smaller, um, how do I seam a jumper? So I have put together a couple of series and I'm part way through recording them. So I've got the granny square series and I've recorded how to make a granny square and there's already one on my channel but I'm redoing it just so they're all the same yarn all the way through. Um, how to weave in the ends on a granny square, how to do the join as you go, how to do continuous join as you go, continuous joining the go for the round such as like a sleeve. Um, I'm also then going to be doing, I've done a half granny square or triangle because I do use those in my patterns and it's always handy to know. Um, then I also am going to do one for the victory skirt because I add in and take out granny squares on the different rounds to make it fit around my butt basically. So I'm going to show you how to do that. There's also a, another one coming for the sleeves. So on Victory, I've used granny squares for the sleeves and I've got a hack where it goes from four granny squares to three so that the last round is more um, fitted to your wrist rather than belling out. Um, because I have done that on I wanted to do that on Promise and so then I decided to implement that on Victory. So I'm going to record that to show you how to do that. And then the other series I'm doing is how to crochet a pattern. Um, if it's your first garment or you just want to have a bit of a deep understanding, it will definitely be for you. Um, so how to take your own measurements, how to pick a size in the pattern, mine or anybody's pattern. Um, then also how to do your gauge swatch which will also be useful for anybody doing my workbook so how to make one the importance of it how to measure it um, then also how to read a pattern just because there's simple things in there but unless you're told you don't really understand or you have to learn through experience but it can be a little bit daunting the first time you pick up a pattern and I definitely have had help with crochet and definitely with my knitting patterns. Like I will take pictures of bits and send them to Nicole and be like, help. And so I'm putting all of that together in a video so that when you come across something in a crochet pattern, like you're like, oh yeah, I can do that, no problem. Um, and then I'm also doing one where I seam the jumper together to show you how to do that. And then also just little bits on how you can alter patterns so make them longer or wider to suit you and then I'm going to be also doing another series called Inside the Biz and it's basically inside HGDC um, not in terms of the patterns but the business side so how much profit I make on patterns um, how much it costs to put a pattern out there the expenses of running a crochet business or side hustle, um, different streams of income that you can have from crocheting or knitting and all those different bits and pieces like do I need a website and all these other questions that I have basically gone and researched and then I've come to my own decision and I've got a lot of information that I can share with you so you can make your own choice as well and also then just to be transparent on costs on a lot of things um, because for example you might sign up for a website but then there's other costs associated that until you start you don't really realise um, so yeah I'm recording 
lots for you. They're just on pause at the moment until my throat gets better, but that's okay because there's still quite a bit to edit and they will be coming out the granny square series first and then how to make a pattern and alongside that it will be interspersed with the inside the biz because that will now be a regular feature on the channel so not only will you get to see patterns and all the good stuff i like to crochet on and how i'm curating my own handmade wardrobe and how i'm also running my business and then also loads and loads of handy tips for you so I feel like HDDC is like the place to be and I hope you feel the same so give me a thumbs up, like this, um, that's what thumbs up is, subscribe and if there's any videos that you want to see, um, whether it's tutorials or whether it is anything about Inside the Biz then drop me a comment below and I'll get that recorded for you. I'll put it in the queue and get it out to you when I can. So I'm going to go and get myself a hot drink, probably take a nap because I'm still feeling really, <laughs> really sleepy, really tired and my throat's a bit sore and I hope that wherever you are you're okay. The UK looks like it's going to be heading into a second lockdown. Um, I think it'll be after our half term which is like the end of October, kind of thing after that be into some sort of lockdown there's restrictions all across the uk but they're not consistent in all areas um Desta never really came out of a lockdown since march we've always had additional restrictions in place even when the rest of the country was like lifting um but those up north uh, it's a lot stricter up there now so and i mean then across the rest of the world we're all feeling the impact so i just hope wherever you are that you are feeling healthy, staying safe, and that you know you've got all the essentials. You're warm if you're in a cold area, and you've just got access to basic necessities, and of course, making time to crochet. So wherever you are, tribe, take care, and I will see you again soon.